Hey, what's up everyone? So I have a pretty cool topic for you today because we are once again going to talk about the new async await APIs. So if you remember in a previous video, well, I have shown you how we could take an existing asynchronous function that works with a compression handler and turn it into a new async API. However, there was, we could say, a strong limitation to this approach because it would only work with asynchronous functions that only return a single result. Think, for instance, of a network call that will return its value once the network call has succeeded. However, well, such functions are only a special case of asynchronous code. And well, there is a lot of asynchronous code that actually returns more than a single value. Think, for instance, well, if you want to know the location of the user, well, that value is meant to evolve over time. And so you want to get updates, you want to get new values over time because you want to know the location of the user as it changes over time. And from what I have shown you in my previous videos, well, we still don't have a mean to convert such asynchronous code that delivers value over time using the new async await API. And well, as you can imagine, it's going to be the topic for today's video. Today, I want to show you how we can actually take these functions that return values over time asynchronously and well, use them using the new async await API. So let's get started by pasting in some code. So as you can see, I have pasted a class called number generator. And well, basically this class, it simulates well an instance that is going to provide new values over time asynchronously. So we have a handler. So is the function will be called asynchronously. And as you can see, this function take as its argument, the new value, which is an int. And then we have the implementation of the number generator. And as you can see under the hood, I have simulated everything using a timer. So when we call the function start generating, well, we invalidate a potentially already existing timer, and then we create a new timer. As you can see, this timer is going to emit values every second, is going to repeat every second, and every second, well, this closure is going to be executed. And as you can see in the closure, I create a new random number and I call my handler passing as its argument the number that was generated. And then I have a function also stop generating that is going to, well, as you can imagine, invalidate the timer. This way, the number generator will stop emitting new values. So we have this number generator. As you've seen, well, it uses the traditional way of implementing asynchronous call using a completion handler. And what I want is now to encapsulate this API into a new modern API that's going to expose an async function. So first step is going to be well to write an extension on number generator. And then well in this extension, I'm going to implement a static property that is going to return to me well we could say a new async version of my number generator. So let me write the signature of this computed static property. And as you can see, I am using the type async stream. And as you can imagine from the signature, async stream is the new API provided by Swift that is going to enable us well to implement an async stream, meaning an async function is going to return values over time. Okay, now let's see how we are going to implement this static property. So first I'm going to have to return an async stream. And as you can see, well, the signature of async stream is not that different to that of the function with checked continuation, because as you can see, I return an async stream. This async stream is going to take as an argument a closure and the closure has a continuation as its argument. And if you remember, the continuation is the object that allows us to bridge existing completion handler based asynchronous code to a new async API. Basically, we are going to use this continuation in order, well, to take our values provided asynchronously Compression handler and make them available to a call site that uses the new async await API. So, how are we going to implement this closure? Well, first step is going to be to build a number generator because this is the API that we want to encapsulate. Then, in order to work, well, that generator needs a handler in order, well, to be able to deal with the value that is going to provide over time. So, let's implement the handler. And as you can see inside the handler, so I get the new number as an argument and I am using the continuation in order to send this value to the async await call site. And as you can see on the continuation, this time I am not calling the function resume, but instead I'm calling the function yield. So the idea is actually quite similar to calling resume, 
except that, well, resume, it would resume the execution and end there, whereas yield is going, well, to provide a new value, but it's not going to be the end of the stream because, of course, the entire point of the async stream is to be able to deliver, so to yield several values over time. Then I'm going to also set a closure on the continuation itself. So as you can see, this closure is called on termination. So is the closure is going to be called once while the async stream has been terminated. And as you can see inside the closure, what I'm doing is that I'm calling the method stop generating on my generator. So you might also notice here the attribute at sendable. So I'm not going to go into too much details about this attribute because basically it could deserve a video of its own. But for the context of this video, well, you can understand the attribute at sendable as saying, I acknowledge to the compiler that everything I am using inside my closure can be used across threads. And finally, I need to do one last thing inside this closure. Well, I need to actually call start generating on the generator in order for it well to start generating values over time. And this is actually all for the implementation of my async stream of integers. So everything is implemented. But before we actually try and use this async stream, I want to take a moment to actually focus here on the function on termination. So as I've told you, the purpose of on termination is to provide the closure that will be called well when the async stream has terminated. So inside it, I am calling generator stop generating. So basically, we can see it as a way to deal with memory management in the broad sense of the term. But that's not all. And this closure on termination is actually incredibly important for my async stream to work. Because, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to comment the implementation of on termination. So when you see this, well, you might be thinking, okay, the code is still going to work, except that memory is not going to be managed properly, which could lead to some bug at runtime. But actually, if I were to run the code like it is, well, we wouldn't see a single value being generated. And the reason for it is that with this code being commented, actually, no one is retaining the number generator because as you can see, the number generator is a local value of the closure. And since no one retains it, well, once the closure has returned, the number generator is going to go out of memory and the async stream is never going to generate a single value. And on the other hand, so when everything has been correctly implemented, as you can see, the closure on termination is going to retain the generator. The continuation is going to retain the closure on termination. And finally, the async stream is going to retain the continuation. So it's actually through the use of the generator in the closure on termination that the async stream is going to take ownership of the generator. And I find this pattern super interesting because as we've seen, if you forget to implement on termination, nothing is going to happen. You don't have a subtle bug at runtime because you're going to notice the issue right away. And we could say that this pattern is kind of a fail safe pattern because if you forget to properly deal with memory, well, nothing is going to happen. You're going to notice it immediately instead of having a subtle bug at runtime. So actually, on my end, it was the first time that I was seeing this kind of face safe pattern on the iOS SDK, and I find it super interesting, and I think it's really something that we should take well a lesson on because having that kind of pattern in our own code could be super useful. So that's all I had to say for this implementation of the async stream that is going to encapsulate my number generator. Now that everything is implemented, well, it's more than time that we actually use this async stream. Okay, so as you can see, we are no longer in the same file. We have moved to a new file. We are now in the content view of a SwiftUI app. So I've just created a standard app using the standard template in Xcode. And what I want to do now, well, is to be able to call my number generator and basically display the number being generated on the screen. So I want my screen to be updated with the new number every second. So the first step to implement this, well, is first to add an add state property, which is going to be the current number. And to simplify everything, well, I'm just going to give zero as the initial value. Then in order to display that number, so I'm going to update the text component being used here. And instead of hello world, we are going to display current number is, and then add the current number to the string. Okay, so we are almost good. We just need to find a way to call the number generator async stream API. 
Okay, so if you remember from my previous video, so when you want to have an async function being executed when your Swift UI view appears, so you don't use on appear, instead you use a new API called task. And it's the same thing than on appear, except that in task you can call async functions. Okay, so now it's time to actually use the async stream. And to use this async stream, we are going to use a new syntax that was introduced with the last version of Swift, which is called for await in. And it's basically a way to iterate over an async stream of values. So it looks like this. So we have the for keyword, then the await keyword, then we give an identifier to what we are iterating over. So here is going to be the new number. And then we use the keyword in. And finally, we use the async stream that we want to iterate over. So here in our case, it's number generator dot numbers, which is my async stream. And by using this new syntax, what's going to happen is that, well, we are going to await for a new number. And then every time a new number is provided through the yield method of the continuation, well, the value will be assigned to the variable new number and we will enter the body of the for loop. So what are we going to do in the body of the for loop? Well, we are just going to update the current number by doing current number equal new number. And now it's actually time to test our code and see what is happening. So I'm going to start a simulator and well, we are going to see what is displayed on the screen. And so as you can see, everything is working as expected. So every second, a new number is generated and that number is being displayed on the screen. And everything is working through the async stream API inside our async stream. So we have our number generator. Inside the handler of the number generator, we call yield on the continuation with a new value. And that value is then being consumed here at the call site thanks to the for await in syntax. So as you can see, this async stream API is quite nice because, well, it's actually fairly easy to use. It's not more complicated than using a with check continuation. And what's really nice is that unlike, well, we could say your classic async function that can return only a single result, async streams have the ability to yield several values over time. And so basically we could say that async streams, they are an alternative to a combined publisher whenever you are doing something that is quite simple, meaning just going to get a stream of async value and then syncing over this value in order well to consume them. Of course, if you wanted to have a pipeline of data transformation, it would be more complex. Maybe a combined publisher would still be the better choice. But for such a simple use case, as you can see, async stream is a nice alternative to using a combined publisher. And that's all for this video. That's all I wanted to tell you about this new async stream API. So as always, if you have already experimented with this API, well, please let me know in the comment how it went. If you have enjoyed the video, feel free to share them with your colleagues. It's always a big help for me. Thank you all for watching this video and see you next time.